Don't go away after the break. We'll be joined in just a moment by Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. Welcome back. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, Nicola, obviously it is a joy to have you here. Thank but you. Since, but since <laughs> you haven't got any pretensions yourself to be Prime Minister of the whole of the United Kingdom, <laughs> what, why are you so visible in this campaign, you know, taking part in things like the leaders' events and all that kind of stuff? Well, the SNP for the last two years has been the third biggest party in the House of Commons, so it's absolutely right and proper that our voice is heard in this campaign. But I think it's really important, when you think about the dynamic of this election in England, it looks as if Theresa May is on course to win with a bigger majority because of the meltdown in the Labour Party. In fact, she called this election to strengthen her hand in her own words. And that makes it all the more important that there are strong voices of opposition in the House of Commons after this election so that we don't have an unfettered, out of control Tory government able to do whatever it wants on Brexit, on austerity, on public services. So from a Scottish point of view, the only way to make sure there are strong voices standing up for Scotland, making our voice heard and protecting our interests is to vote SNP and send SNP MPs to the House of Commons. So that is obviously seen by the Tories as a sign that you're absolutely up for coalitions with Labour and the oh, Lib Dems. In, in the last general election... And they should election, be straightforward about that. Look, in, in the last general election, I was very straightforward about that. The polls suggested, it turned out they were wrong, but they suggested that a hung parliament might be on the cards. And I was very clear then that if the arithmetic uh, lent itself to a progressive coalition, I would want the SNP to be part of that. This election is different in the sense that the polls don't suggest there is going to be a hung parliament. So unless the polls are getting it very, very, very wrong, the arithmetic in the next House of Commons is not going to lend itself to that. What looks more likely is that we will have a strengthened Tory government on the back of a, a bigger majority in England. So my point is that the, the dynamic and the important thing in this election is to make sure there is a strong opposition holding that Tory government to account. There are massive challenges for the whole of the UK in the next few years, not just Brexit, but the possibility of an extreme, perhaps chaotic Brexit. There is the question of what happens with austerity. I've got a very different view on that to Theresa May. So these things have really big implications for our public services. So my message is, if you don't want the Tories just to have a free hand to do what they want, if you're in Scotland, make sure you send strong Scottish voices. Tory MPs from Scotland will be rubber stamps for Theresa May. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But just as we've seen in the last couple of years, Angus Robertson, as leader of the SNP group, providing week after week the only really effective opposition to the Tories, then this election gives us the, the chance to ensure Scotland's voice is not silenced, our parliament is not undermined. We have but, those strong voices. Now, you're a left of centre party. Mm. Do you like what you've seen of Labour's manifesto? Well, it's been really interesting. I know we haven't been supposed to have seen Labour's manifesto thus far. We've seen quite but a lot it's, of it. It's been, we've seen all of it, I think. Um, it's been really interesting because if I look at some of the key policies that Labour is putting forward, free tuition for university students, scrapping hospital car parking, ambitious targets around uh, renewable generation and, and climate change, free school meals. Uh, today, even with the Tories, council mm. house building, these are all policies that the SNP government in Scotland has already So to be clear, if there introduced. was an opportunity for a deal with Labour look, to govern, you'd do it. To be, look, Jeremy Corbyn's not going to win this election. He's not going to be Prime Minister. I don't think he's going to get within a million miles uh, of, of number 10. And I'm, I'm not saying that in any sort of, uh, you know, opinion sense. I'm saying that as a statement of fact, unless the polls are more wildly wrong than they've ever been before. So I'm, I'm trying to deal with reality. But the point about Labour's policies is... You know, it's very clear from Labour's manifesto uh, that the SNP has been leading the way in terms of progressive policies in the UK. And, you know, let's make sure we can continue that. We don't have a Tory government that's able to drag Scotland backwards. Let's keep being champions of progressive policies with MPs in the House of Commons that can do that. The biggest risk, in my view, from this election is a Tory government that literally has a blank cheque and a free hand. And if you look at what's going to be the opposition, Labour, you know, Labour's in a sorry state, but does anybody think that after this election they're not going to descend but, into an even sorrier so, so, state so, so, as they so, fight with each other? So, so, the only opposition will be the SNP. So, so a couple of points on this. You do now have the power to set 
income tax bans, income tax rates. They've proposed a new rate of tax for those earning £80,000 or more, tax on mm -hmm. richer people. Would you do that in Scotland? Well, we, we've just set income tax rates in Scotland for this yeah. year, so we've uh, made no change to the basic rate of income tax. What about tax. in the future, but can though? I, can I just, do you think, is, it a, is it a good idea? Well, can, I, can I just set Please. out a position first properly? Um, we, we've not changed the basic rate because we think at a time of rising living standards mm. that would be wrong. We've not raised the, the higher rate as well, but we decided not to give a cut to higher rate tax. I know, you didn't raise the, the, the threshold. Run, so we yeah. didn't raise the threshold because that really speaks to our priorities of investment in public services uh, and helping the so vulnerable. slightly better off people paid a bit not, more. Well, they don't pay more than they pay just now. They're just not getting a yeah. tax cut. And that speaks I'm to our priorities. More than in anything. terms of, yeah. uh, we, uh, at the 2015 election, uh, said that we would support a 50 pence top yeah. additional rate of tax. We haven't done that in Scotland alone because we don't, although we control the tax rates yeah. in Scotland, we don't control you know, measures to uh, get rid of or, or tackle tax avoidance, so to, to avoid people switching their income into capital gains. So is that off the agenda we, then? We haven't done that in Scotland alone, although we keep it under review. I do think there is an argument for that UK-wide. Mm. Now, I haven't published my manifesto yet. Touch wood, it hasn't been leaked uh, yet. We'll put forward our policies there, but I think there's still a case for that UK-wide at a time when our public services are under so much pressure and we see poverty rates rising because but of the Tory welfare agenda. you have the question now on uh, uh, putting up the tax for those that, that's on 80,000 or that, more. That's not my policy. And so the, you're against it? Well, uh, it's not a policy I've put forward in Scotland and we control, as you said, tax rates in Scotland. So as somebody who's famously by, supposed by to be straight talking, you haven't By really definition, if it's not my question. policy, I don't no. support it. Um, uh, OK. But we, right. but we will set tax rates every year in Scotland and we'll consider uh, the balance of that. You know, tax rates are obviously important in terms of raising mm. revenue, but we've also got to look at uh, the, the economy and what we need to do to, to grow our economy as well. So we'll take uh, balanced decisions on tax, but we'll take them in our own budgetary cycle uh, because we now control income now, tax now, rates. Now, one of the critiques of you in government made, for example, by the respected OECD mm. is that standards in schools have declined. What's gone wrong? Well, let me address that point directly. Mm. I'm not trying to dodge it, but let me just put a bit of context around yeah. it. We've introduced a new school curriculum, which has been praised by the OECD. We have record numbers... But you numbers accept that standards have I'll, gone down? I'll come on to this okay. specific point, but we have record numbers of young people leaving school with higher passes, advanced higher passes, going into university, uh, training or employment. So on many measures, Scottish education is doing well and improving. We have a particular challenge as we've introduced this new curriculum around the teaching of literacy and numeracy. And we're putting a lot of effort, we've got a programme of reform in education designed to tackle that, but also accelerate progress in terms of closing the attainment gap, the, the gap between the richest and the poorest uh, young people. And we're backing all of that with greater transparency. Do you think you took your eye off the ball initially? No, I, I, I don't. We've, over the past few years, we've been introducing this new curriculum. But I, I've been very upfront about my determination to tackle the areas where to be very frank about it, I don't think we're doing as well as we should be doing. So we have a, a new attainment challenge. We're putting more resources directly to school. So I, I know the debate in England is about falling school budgets. We are increasing the resources going to schools and giving head teachers much greater autonomy about how that money is spent. I've got lots more to ask <laughs> you. You'll be sad to hear. But first, <laughs> Anushka's got one or two things to say. Thank you. Well, there has been no love lost these days between our guest and the Prime Minister, Theresa May. And yet, it started off so well. This was their first official meeting and Nicola Sturgeon tweeted that this picture might make girls everywhere feel like nothing is off limits. They were probably quite inspired by this picture, picture too. Another historic meeting between the two most powerful women in Britain, although the Daily Mail decided to use it to wind up us feminists by saying it was a battle of Lexit. Well, here we are not interested in pins, we are interested in politics, so let's compare that. Number one, mandate. Nicola Sturgeon has led her party in national polls in Scotland and she won one million votes in 2016. Theresa May, as Tory leader, hasn't gone to the whole country quite yet, so for now it is a mandate in Maidenhead. 35,000. She'll be hoping to do better than that on June the 8th, but for now, Nicola can boast my mandate is better than yours. 
Not so when it comes to the UK-wide personal approval rating. Theresa May in the positive, a plus 10, perhaps an election bounce. Across the UK, Nicola, I'm afraid it is minus 36, although I imagine this is the number that she will be interested in, plus 11, when you just look at Scotland. Now, this week, the Prime Minister talked about jobs for the girls and jobs for the boys. And we learned that in the May household, she does the cooking, and he takes out the bins, although he did also point out that she also runs the country. And so I must ask Nicola, in your household, what are the jobs for the girls? Oh, I'm afraid in my household, my husband uh, does all the cooking and most of the domestic tax. I got on with the girl job of running the country. Oh, nice answer. <laughs> Do you recognise that <laughs> distinction between... No, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to get into a sort of ding-dong with the Prime Minister here, but I think it's really important. We're, we're all trying to break down gender, gender stereotypes. And, you know, I've spent a lot of time, and I know Theresa May will agree with this, and saying to girls, there's nothing off limits. You should aspire to whatever you want to do. I think you do. agree on all that, don't you? That, that I, I hope so, but I think we've got to be careful we don't then just play into these gender stereotypes. But I hope we would agree that we should encourage all young girls to think they can run the country, they can be brain surgeons, they can do absolutely anything they want. And uh, that, I think, is really important. Now, now where you don't agree... Um, oh, many things. Well, there are a few things, but you, I'm delighted to say, are joining us here at ITV on Thursday for our leaders' debate. Yes. Um, the Prime Minister is not joining us, or at least she's so far said she's not joining us. Why do you think she doesn't want to participate in this head-to-head -head with you and the other party leaders? Well, it kind of looks, if I can use a, a Scottish word, it kind of looks as if she's feared, uh, which means frightened of, mm. of the scrutiny. You know, I, I think doing... TV appearances like the one show is all perfectly legitimate, but not as a, a substitute for the hard questions and the hard scrutiny. So I'll be delighted to put myself into that debate on Thursday. Theresa May seems to want to go through this election dodging the public, dodging any real questions. You know, there's been reports that the media have to submit their questions in advance. So I'll challenge her today. You know, change your mind, come and join us on Thursday. I'd say the same to Jeremy Corbyn and let's have a proper debate where we all put forward our policies, but we all are subject to scrutiny and hard questions as well. Yeah. I mean, as it happens, there may be other journalists who are asked to uh, tell them what the... I mean, I've never been asked uh, by any... Sure, I'm, I'm you only or going Theresa on the or anybody yeah. to talk about my questions in advance. Of course, I never would. Um, the... You certainly didn't agree to do it for me today, I <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would you very sensibly you. didn't ask. You very because <laughs> you don't want to know what I say when people ask. Um, now, if I could, however, um, ask you on this whole issue of a second independence mm. referendum, some people think that this vote that we're about to see on June the eighth mm. will be a vote by the Scottish people on whether they want a second independence referendum. How do well, you see it? Well, firstly, the, the vote on June the 8th will not decide whether Scotland becomes independent or not. Yes, there's the issue of who should be in charge of Scotland's future. Should it be the Scottish people and the Scottish Parliament or a Westminster government? My position is, is quite straightforward. At the end of the Brexit process, and I oh. stress that, not now, but at the end of the process, when we know the terms of Brexit, I think Scotland should have a choice about our future. Um, you know, the Tory position appears to be UK-wide. It doesn't matter how bad the Brexit talks go, people just have to like it or lump it. I don't think that's right. I think we should have a choice over our future. But actually, in this election, there's a much more immediate opportunity for Scotland, and that is to make sure our voice is heard in these Brexit negotiations. Because, you know, we, I think, see real risks now, not just of Brexit, but of an extreme or chaotic Brexit. I caught some of what David Davis was saying earlier on, and that would be really damaging to the economy. It would sacrifice a lot of jobs. Now, the Scottish Government put forward proposals just at the tail end of last year that accepted we'd leave the EU, but wanted to protect our place in the single market. Theresa May dismissed them out of hand. So my message in this election to voters in Scotland, you can give some democratic legitimacy to those proposals to try to protect our place in the single market. And whether you voted leave or remain or, or yes or no in 2014, if you vote for me and for the SNP, you strengthen my hand in making sure Scotland's voice is Just held. very briefly, because unfortunately we are out of time, but mm -hmm. can I therefore just, though, be clear? If you get fewer seats, fewer votes than you did last time, in this June the 8th election. Is that a blow to your hopes of a second well, independence? We're, we're fighting every constituency to win, but you know elections are judged by who wins. So the, the question is who will win the election in Scotland? Now, I take nothing for granted, but I'm oh. campaigning to win 
the election in Scotland. And traditionally, in any democracy, it's the party that wins that has the endorsement for its position. Lovely to see you again. <laughs> and we'll you doubtless too. talk more before June the 8th. Thanks to the First Minister. And you can hear more from her in our leaders' debate this coming Thursday at 8 o'clock on ITV.